for all microaggressions that I have experienced. I've been told I'm pretty for a black girl, although that one is closer to just being outright racist. I've been told I was articulate, which sounds like a compliment, but frequently black people hear this and what it sounds like to us is you didn't expect that I could speak clearly because I'm a black person. And now that you're surprised, you feel like you're giving me a compliment because you're telling me I'm articulate. Instead, just say something like, I like how you made that point because then it actually shows that you're listening to the words coming out of my mouth versus sitting in awe that a black person can speak normally. I've had random people I do not know just walk up to me and touch my hair. It makes me feel like I'm a pet or that the hair growing out of my head is so out of the ordinary that you just absolutely had to touch it. Just ask. I'll almost always say no, but I think it's important to respect somebody's personal space and just ask before you touch their hair. I was asked on a date with a white guy if I knew my dad, which felt like he was assuming that like black people don't know our fathers. When I was still practicing law, there were people who would like list off a bunch of black people that they knew and ask me if I knew them, thinking that like all black people must know each other or that we don't have mutual friends who are non-black. One white lawyer always wanted to introduce me to people, but every person he introduced me to was another black person. Like, I guess he would meet black people and just think, you need to meet other black people. I think he just thought he was helping me to network, but I just, I can meet plenty of people within our community who I can network with. In many courthouses in North Carolina, you cannot bring your laptop or cell phone into the courthouse unless you're an attorney. And there were many times that I would be stopped at security and I would tell security like, look, I have my laptop and cell phone, I am an attorney. And they would ask to see my bar card, which looks like this. My license is currently inactive, so obviously this, this is old because I no longer practice law. Um, but if I was accompanied by a white attorney from my law firm, we would just have to tell security that we were attorneys and they would let us in. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But the truth is that when beauty is constantly viewed from the lens of a predominantly white and Western gaze, and for so long shaped by and held to Eurocentric standards, the concept of beauty becomes dangerously distorted. Let's talk about it on the mic. Hello, good people. This is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker, coming back at you live once again from the Lone Star State with another edition of the Media Mike Speaks. All right, good people. It is 52 minutes past the hour, and yes, we are the voice of the everyday citizen. All right, good people. Uh, that was Miss, formerly um, the late Miss Chelsea Christ on, I think, one of her. Um, I guess Tiki Talks, as you could say. And it is notable, just in case you did not know, that uh, she did have other things going on um, in her life at the time. She had worked on reforming the American uh, justice system. She did free legal work for prisoners believed to have been sentenced unjustly. I think she worked with uh, Kim Kardashian on that. And I thought I would inform you of that since people are still shocked over her recent passing along with Miss Bethel. Now I know, you know, in that uh, Tiki Talk thing, she was talking about her um, situations dealing with um, the culture of New York and Caucasians, you know, the, uh, I guess you'd say some stereotypes that they had of African Americans and as a woman of color. But coming from North Carolina, I guess it was somewhat of a culture shock. So um, as you all may or may not know, I lived uh, in New York for two years. So I know exactly what she's referring to. But uh, hers may have been on a more, um, I would say, different scale. But anyway, did you know, good people, did you know, for the first time in the history of beauty patches, because I didn't know, all five major title holders Miss Universe, Miss World, Miss America, Miss USA, and Miss Teen USA were black women. It's true. I didn't notice it. I mean, well, it wasn't advertised. It's usually all on television. 
you know, they usually always show these things on TV. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. I don't watch these things, but I do hear about them. They used to advertise these a lot, but they didn't. But this has gone unnoticed. But too many black women and perhaps even more important, importantly, young black girls who for so long have been told that beauty was not an arena wherein they could feel included, let alone lauded. The current reign of black beauty queens signals what might be considered the shattering of the glass ceiling. And this recognition of black beauty on such a large scale and influential scale is a meaningful, is as meaningful as it is monumentous. Now, I got this from, uh, I think, Fashion Magazine, Good People, this article one of my subscribers sent me. So, you see, the question is, are, are the rise of African-American beauty queens perceived to be a threat to mainstream society? That is the question. I don't know. But since these last two incidents regarding Miss Christ and Miss Bethel, there could be something to this. You know, things that make you go, hmm, jumping and falling out of windows, really? Anyway, but let's continue here. On December 8th, 2019, history was made as Miss South Africa, Zozibini Tunzi, won the 68th Miss Universe competition. The first black woman to win the renowned pageant since Leela Lopez in 2011. More noticeably, however, she was the first dark-skinned black woman to wear the crown with short, natural, and unprocessed hair. Then came another first, taking a stand against prejudiced beauty standards for black women. She quotes here, I grew up in a world where a woman who looks like me with my kind of skin and my kind of hair was never considered to be beautiful. She goes on to quote in her closing speech, I think it is time that stops today. I want children to look at me and see my face and I want them to see their faces reflected in mine, unquote. With her skin as dark and smooth, dark and smooth as the world's finest chocolate, I guess like the Hershey bar, and her cropped natural hair unrivaled, raveled by the crown. She was incredibly, undeniably beautiful. One week later, Miss Jamaica, Tony, and Singh couldn't have lost the Miss World competition if she tried. She simply stood out from the start to finish. She exuded pose, grace, and charisma. This is why everyone should be celebrating the dominance of black beauty queens. And I do agree. You see, people, the U.S. is changing. Well, it's been changing, and according to the news on the brink of uh, to, to the news on the brink of war, <laughs> if Russia don't stop acting up, and one of my subscribers would like for me to do a video on that, which I'm I'm going to uh, probably sometime tomorrow. So, just my two cents on further research into the life of these beauty queens and the late Miss Chris and Bethel. Feel free to leave your comments in the comment section below, good people. Until next time, this is your guy, Mr. Educator, Mr. Communicator, Mr. Free Thinker. Subscribe, share, and like to keep me rocking on the mic. Have a good night. They'll understand you soon, it won't be long. Keep on, keep on.